Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance is growing all around the world. This is episode number 369. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, all my friends out there. We're getting very close to our conference, aren't we? Yes, we are. We've uh, we got a lot done. I think the the problem I've had with you know other people have asked to help, and I'm so appreciative of that. But we've had to run so many different places. It's hard to pin down times to get people to help because I'm thinking I'd get somebody there, they'd be there 30 minutes, drive all those miles, and then we'd have to go somewhere else. So um, thank you so much for all your um, all of your help and your offers to to help but i've really got most of the food done um you know i I arranged it where it was going to be in freezers uh because i knew that i i couldn't wait until you know those last few weeks and get that much food done and so it took a lot of planning i have notes and sheets and charts and, and everything but everything's coming along everything is great uh, we sure feel a lot of backlash from the enemy, which is good in my opinion, because I believe that means that the enemy is very worried about what God's going to do. And um, I'm just excited, excited. I, I get aggravated every once in a while because I, I can tell the enemy's spitting and you know, try, trying to cause distractions and things like that. But hey... We're Scare. going to get this thing done. Getting some things done have been like trying to move through mire, but God gives us strength anyway. <laughs> he does. He has strengthened us, and um, God has a plan. That's for sure. And in the meanwhile, we need to be in prayer for those in the path of Hurricane Ian. Um, unless things change, and it looks like it's going to hit some of Florida. Yeah, it is. And so we've got to really be praying for the folks there. Um in you fact, know, we, we've seen a lot of people praying, and now they're saying it was originally going to hit a Category 4. Now I think it's going to be down to a Category 2 by the time it hits landfall. Oh, hopefully. I'm praying that that would lessen. You know, we're in a time where, um, you know, it's it's going to be hard to determine what God's doing because there's it's like we talked about, the you know, the last podcast about His ways are unsearchable, and there there's no way, I can tell you this, there is no way, the United States is going to get away from all the judgment. No. It's already been released. It's not like God is saying, well, I'm going to hit here and hit these people. It's not that. It is there is a, a reaction when you have this kind of sin going on, and, and I believe great winds blow and there's great upheavals and temperature changes because the, the world, God's creation, that is still groaning. <laughs> yeah. Is is reacting and revolting to this much sin? I uh, saw it. Uh, it's been popping up a couple of times, and I finally looked at it. It was talking about um, a church in Katy, Texas, that had a, a drag queen bingo show, something like that. And I thought, who would have church. ever thought that these things? And they and they said it was part of their. Uh, inclusivity, you know, of, of saying to the LGBT that they're they're welcome in there. But but let me tell you something, folks. This this is the truth, and people may get mad at me for saying this. This is not a lifestyle. These are fetishes. Yes, they're fetishes. They're something that no child should ever gaze upon, much less touch or be close to or engaged in. Well, They're well. fetishes. And and if you watch, I, I've got a lot of inside information because of this programming junk. Did you know one of the number one things the programmed men were involved with is tights, stretchy material. What do these people wear? Tights. It's fetishes. It's, it's probably programmed people just let loose. No, no... Um, you know, nothing to to pull them back from whatever's just, you know, driving them. And and the problem is this. I I feel sorry for anybody that's caught in these kind of positions. I do. Yeah. And I have a desire to see God set them free. 
But if we don't stand up and say something about what's being done to these children, then we will yes. be judged too. Because it's, it's grooming is exactly what it is. It's grooming. Well, you aren't going to tell me now that, that this isn't, why are they after the kids? Well, remember that one that one course thing they had where there was the the the, the uh, trans community and the gay community said they were coming after the kids and they immediately took it off because even the gay community said you know it was repulsing, and people looked up the, the faces of the people that there and there were several of them that were uh, convicted child molesters. Well, you know they're gonna. That's what child molesters do. They go around uh, grade schools. They. You know, they, they go to these camps where kids go. And so it's, you know, you can, you can let your mercy and compassion lead you to a place of um, danger because you aren't speaking out about what's yeah. going on. Now, here's, here's something that I've been talking about for years. The church that I went to that I hated to go to, I went because my sister didn't want to go by herself. She was seven years older than me. She would beg me to go with her. I hated it. I, the kids there didn't like me. There, there were several of them that said stuff to me all the time that was just hurtful. And it was, not, it was horrid. And um, there, I, I started looking at this, at this church when I, when I started getting deliverance. And uh, I thought, oh, my word. I was surrounded by Freemasons there, by, I mean, people that, that you would just think, they can't be Christians. They can't be. And, you know, where this church in K- Katy, Texas, is a first Christian church, Disciples of Christ. That was that church that I went to down there that, that people were reporting about one of the former pastors. Remember that we got told yep. that what was going on there that with, with some of the kids? Um. I I do not trust the Disciples of Christ headquarters. Your mom worked there. Mm-hmm. She told stories. I don't trust that. And so so here, look at the churches that are promoting this now. There's yep. several in Springfield that are promoting. Mean, it's just I've got to the place where I'm really having to pray my way through this, guys. I don't want to get off balance. I don't want to get to where I can't move in compassion. But I'll tell you this, you can just bank, take this to the bank. If we don't stand up against this, I can feel the anger from heaven over this with these children. And I am telling you, we will see way worse storms than we've ever seen. We aren't going to, unless the body of Christ stands up and says, we demand that this stop, that you aren't going to bring this into schools, you aren't. I'm telling you, the judgment will increase, and I don't blame him. No, and one, one, of the thing, one of the things we need to, to understand, and this goes back from the book of Revelation, we're warned about the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam could not curse what God had blessed. And so his solution was, you get God's people to sin, and God will judge it. And that was, that was then embedded into the priesthood of darkness way back then, they knew because America was started with a covenant with God, first with the pilgrims and then with many of the founding fathers, that God's hand of protection was on, on this nation, that the only way to take down America, which is what the Luciferians want, is to get America so filled with sin that God takes it down. Well, and that's the path that we were on. Yes. And many prophets have declared that. And, you know... Um, I wanted to read Romans 1, 26 through 32, because it, it just pretty much tells you exactly what's going on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, the, here's where I think we're going to have to ask God to give us discernment because there is going to be an utterance released against those with a reprobate mind. Yes. I think it will be sometime during the feast. I think that when that is released, immediately there is going to be judgment upon them because a reprobate mind cannot be turned around. Is that correct, Mike? Absolutely. Okay, so there will be some that are caught that can be ministered to. There are others that are are reprobate and would just be bringing harm. And I, I think when they get into into predatory mode, I, I think that's the signs of a reprobate. You know, there's mind. been so many gay people that argue against try to put uh, 
this situation in churches and say it's fine with God, then what do they do with these verses? Do they just cut them out of the Bible? They explain them away. Just like sin always wants to explain away the word of God rather than submitting to it, whether it's sexual sin or any other type of immoral sin, greed, whatever. They will try to explain it away. And the thing is, your flesh will explain your way all the way to hell. The word of God is infallible. What God has said, he's the ultimate judge. He's the creator. All mankind will have to answer to him. What he says is sin will always be sin. The cross never changed sin. It set us free from the power of that sin. Mm -hmm. Well, and going on, it says, um, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, uh, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor, Inventors of evil things. Boy, has that gone on lately. Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Um, this is this is my prayer. Father, shut these churches down. Yeah. Shut them down, Father. They, they are promoting evil. They are harming children. Shut them down. Reveal the wickedness to such a degree that they can't stand. Yes, Father. If you need to, Father, shake the ground under them and cause them to collapse on on the building down and save the people out of there. Don't let anybody get hurt, I pray. But collapse these things. Don't let them stand another day. Father, they're temples of Baal. Yes, they are. They're not your temples. And how dare they? How dare they put your name on them? In fact, Tranneyism is directly connected to Baal and Ashtaroth worship. In fact, her priests were were Trannies. They they were. And if you if you look back archaeologically, uh, Dr. Gary Reed documents this in his books that they would they they were they were the original Trannies, in, in in ancient in the ancient world is they would they were men dressed up as women, that were that were priests of Ashtaroth and and Baal. Oh, this is an old thing. Yes. Just come back. But I'll tell you one thing, though, how anybody can think that this, what I've seen on these videos, should be viewed by any anybody is beyond me. I mean, this we have turned so abnormal in this that people don't even know what normal is anymore. No, they don't. What is natural? It is all some kind of, it's, it's almost like you're watching a circus. It's like you're watching, you think you're watching, this has got to be a movie or something. It's real life they're doing this. Absolutely. And, and what they're calling normal and, and just another lifestyle is a bunch of fetishes that they're finally, the devils in them are finally getting to, to loose what's on the inside of them and dance them around. That's exactly what it is. We got to call it what it is, and we're going to have to stand against it. Because if we don't, the, the judgment will take down everything. If we are not salt and light in the earth, there's nothing to preserve anything. No. And, you know, we, we've got a lot going on. I think the body of Christ has prayed, and God's done a lot. Uh, moving things in the government, moving things around, but but see this this judgment was released already. Mm -hmm. the 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 cup of iniquity, the the sinful cup, is already overflowing. It's released. It's not like God's up there saying saying, uh, "Oh, I'm going to judge this or that." It's already been released. So it's on the way. Our prayers are to see how much we can negate the impacts that we can pray and people be spared. But if you think God's going to let these churches stand, if you think he's going to let all of these things go on much longer, my word. I can tell you Hollywood will be a smoking ground. Absolutely. It will be a smoking ground. And it, it has perpetrated these things ever since the beginning of Hollywood. And, and I, I'm to the place. I have spent years mourning what God showed me he was going to do because I thought, man, there's no way there aren't going to be people go with it. I pray he will spare all that are savable. I'm not going to pray that these reprobates continue. No. Because there's too many lives at stake, too many little children that it's, you know what it's going to take? To get these little children to a normal life, 
I've seen the devastations of this programming. I've seen the devastated lives of what they've done. And we can't allow this to go on. We've got to almost stand and call for the judgment of God. I think we do. I really the Bible says How could we be blameless if we don't? The Bible says that God's people that the righteous rejoice in judgment. Knowing well, this, that if I'm in his hand, we, we, we see this in, in the Psalms of protection, he that you know, sitteth in the, in the seat of the, uh, uh, that, uh, that's under the shadow of the Most High God, a thousand will fall by your right hand, ten thousand by your left, but it will not come near you. God can pour out judgment while he keeps his remnant safe. But you know what, what's hard, Mike, is when I saw the judgment hidden, there were a lot of people went. Yeah. Now, God can keep his people safe, but there's going to be people that will go in this, and there's no way around it. Yeah. Um, but if we want any kind of life, if you want any kind of life preserved in this nation, we've got to stand up and declare what God's saying. And, I, you know, this is the Feast of Trumpets. It's time for announcements. And I can announce to, I can make an announcement right now. Everybody better just stand back and watch because God is getting ready to clean some houses. Yeah. That's not only a time of announcements, it's a time that this is the countdown. When, we, when you start the Feast of Trumpets, it's really a countdown 10, 9, 8, 7, all because it's the 10 days of awe that you need to make sure that you're right with God. And that you're right with man to deal with the Day of Atonement, which is which is a prophetic reflection of the returning of Jesus as Messiah ben David. And that he will kosher this planet. Anything that is not humbled before him, he will kosher. And there will be prophetic echoes of that throughout history, and we are now in the time of that. And so, guys, if there was ever a time of, of introspection and repentance and seeking the face of God, it's right now. We also need to understand several other things about the, the during the, the 10 days of awe. There are several other things that Hebraically that go along with this. The, the, I think the one that's of this hour uh, is that the king is in the field, that the kings of Israel would go out and, and they would have access to the people during these 10 days of awe so that you can make petition to the king. In other words, right now we have an open heaven. We have an open mm-hmm, portal to heaven. Right that we can hear from heaven what God is saying, okay, now this is what you need to do to prepare, this is what you need to do to pray so that I can do this, I can do that, and then we can make petitions to the king. This is a time that we need to be crying out, God, stop the evil. Mm. Stop the evil. Whether it's political evil, whether it is social evil, whether it is financial evil, Father, across the board, stop it in the name of Jesus. And, Father, reestablish your covenant in the earth. Reestablish your purposes back in the earth for this nation or whatever nation that you belong to that you're living in. Cry out that God would take hold of that nation. There are so many of them that, that originated with a covenant with God. England originated with a covenant with God. Australia originated with a covenant with God. So many of them had. It's not just America that they understood that there was a God in heaven. And, guys, we need to stand on those covenants saying, God, redeem the land, redeem your people. Set them free so that they can worship you and live the way they're supposed to and get this evil out of the land. And Father, equip your remnant in the name of Jesus that we can move how we need to move, Father, that we can move in supernatural power. One of the things that Mary and I pray every night over over all of our listeners is that that, that heaven would touch them, mm-hmm. that, he would, uh, that the fire of God would be set on the inside of them, that they would be faithful to his throne, faithful to his word and commandments, faithful to his purposes in the earth. And here recently, God has had me add something else, that they would be found worthy to move in the supernatural power of God like no generation before them. Well, that's, that's what the good news of what I can say today because I, I feel, you know, when, when God's getting ready to, to judge something, I, I feel it. Um, but then at the same time, I can give you good news that God's getting ready to move like he never has before. Yes. See, the reason, you know, a lot of people um, are afraid of judgment is they think, well, you know, what, what's God going to pour out and things like that? He, he's well able to take care of his. We've got, you know, one example of that after the other in the Bible. But I can tell you, if we don't have judgment, there's no hope. Absolutely. You can't live in a place like this. Do we want our kids walking on the streets? 
I mean, this is this has got to a place. You know, it's always been there, lurking in the background. But man, they they have just put it in everybody's face. What they call pride. It's up here with the the haters of God, despiteful, proud. Yeah. Well, I got a word from pride cometh before the fall. Well, and you know, maybe maybe I ought to just get my mind focused on on helping those that are going to want help. Yeah. That that's where I've. I feel comfortable. That's where um, I feel like my heart just flows, and I I don't feel like my heart's in a bad place on this. I you know I struggle with it because I just think I just know what's going to happen. But at the same time, if it doesn't happen, all these little kids are going to be ruined. Well, when when you when you look at all this, what they're doing, they're serving another god. They're serving a Baal, whether they know it or not, willingly or unwillingly. That's what they're doing. And by establishing it, okay, we, we had Obama say America was no longer a Christian nation. Okay, we had a president say that. Trump tried to reverse that, saying, yes, we are a Christian nation. So there's, there's this competing of two different things. Either God is going to have this nation, or the Baal of all this perversion and everything else that we see historically is going to take hold. And the only thing that can stop Baal are two things, the judgment of God and revival. Mm-hmm. And we need both, and yeah, we, we need do. it badly. We do, and and as we go, maybe we'll, God will have us pray more to negate judgments in different places. But right now, if we don't have the judgment of God come on this, I, there's so many lives in the balance. That's the way I look at it. You know, everybody could say, well, there's always restoration down the road. Yeah, but I've seen what this does. I've seen firsthand what this does. I've been in very uncomfortable positions to see what this does what this does and to witness it and to cry and to think how could you do this to a life how could you do this to a child and so my my thought is god put the words in my mouth put the words in the mouths of your people that need to speak out what you want done so we can get the let's get it going Let's, yes. It's enough of us just sitting watching and waiting on something. Let's get this thing going. That's what I feel like heaven's saying. Get up, stand on your feet, start making declarations and forbidding this stuff to continue one more day. Yes. You know, things like Disney World. We're going to have to come to grips with what's happened at Disneyland and Disney World. We're going to have to come to grips with the fact that a lot in our government are pedophiles. We're going to have to come to grips with the horrors that have, have happened and stand up and, and speak out against it. And I'm, I mean, I'm not backing off. I'm not backing off. I'm not afraid. I, I knew when I started down this road the danger of it. I'm not afraid because I'll tell you this. Anybody that stands up and defends our God, see, this is, this is like we're not defending God. We're just letting these things just go on. And, and it's, it's sickening. Absolutely. We need to stand up and say there's one holy God. And I'm on his side, and I forbid this craziness any longer. We are at a Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego moment where the world says either bow or yep. burn. And, we're, and we I can say, you know what? My God's able to deliver. That's right. If he delivers, if he doesn't deliver, I'm not bowing. No. Because I will defend God, and I will defend righteousness. You see, it's only when you get into those situations do you find that fourth man in the fire. Everybody always wants to see miracles, but we want to see miracles, Mary, in luxury. We want to see miracles in easy recliners. We want to see miracles when you don't need miracles because we want to be entertained by those miracles. But the truth is, biblically, for God's people, if those miracles didn't happen, the enemy would have won. Mm Mm-hmm. That's when you see true biblical miracles is when you stand up for God and you say, I'm not budging. I'm not moving. If it costs me my life, it will cost me my life, but I'm not moving. And God supernaturally moves and the enemy goes down and you're the only one left standing. That's a miracle. And that's one that you can't fake on a stage. That's one that you can't put a crowd into some type of semi-hypnosis and people are thinking they're getting healed and they're not. All the junk that we have called Christianity is not, is not Christianity at all. It's the sleight of hand. But let me tell you something. When that king says, either you bow or you burn, or, or you burn, and you say, I will not bow, and then you find the fourth man in the fire, you can't fake that. That's right. That's right. And see, that that's what everybody is wanting the glory of God to come. 
the glory, calling for the glory. Do you know what the glory is going to do to the evil? Do you have any idea when that comes, that miracle working power and it settles in, what it's going to do to the evil? Or what's it going to do to all the Ananias and fires that fill the churches? And so, so we're getting ready to see the glory of God. You can take that to the bank. It's coming. It's on the way. His mercy has held back his glory. Absolutely. Because when his holiness gets here, the unholy won't be standing. And it's got, there, there has to be holiness. There has to be holiness. One of the things that I'm hearing from people all across the body of Christ that there are not only tongues and interpretations, but, but prophetic words from established people. That the heaven is crying out, get ready, get pure. I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to come back. There, there's no more games. There's no more playing. Get right with God, and that that's the whole. And that actually lines up exactly with the with the days of all. That's that's the message it of is. the days of all. It is. It's the countdown to get ready because He's coming, and that's what I'm praying this year. And I believe we're still going to be here, or, we, or he wouldn't have had us do that yeah. conference center. But see, I'm pr- I'm believing that lives are going to get changed there and never be the same. Yeah. And let me tell you something with with what, where we're going, both I think at the conference center and the things God is doing. If you have an agenda that is based upon something the devil has done in your life or something that's of your flesh, you better make sure that that dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm examining myself all Me over the too. place because, because I, I've I've had such anger coming up here lately at this stuff that you have to make sure that you're balanced that it's not the flesh intertwined. Uh, but I I really do feel like this is the anger of God that I'm feeling. Yes, I do too. Because let me tell you something: when your agenda meets God's agenda and God is actually really moving, your agenda will die. And there have been played, there have been people in history that died with their agendas when God began to move. Mm-hmm. That's why we have got we've got to live the crucified life. Well, and something's something's changed. Yeah, you you can tell. You know, we we were going along all these years, and I just felt like, okay, we just keep doing what God says, keep praying what He says, keep. But something's changed. We've went from prayer to action. Yes, and God is going to require action. And so um, we just better we just better hold on because the shaking's begun. Uh, I think the storms are going to increase. I think there's going to be um, vast opportunity to share the gospel with people. Vast opportunity to help those that are in need. Um, but there's no way that that we're going to get around all this. You know, and I, I'm kind of stepping on one of my messages for the conference, but we're in a season. God is not going to answer the prayer, just make me feel better. No. Nope. The prayers that, he are gonna, that he's going to answer is, God, make me a warrior for your kingdom. Make me somebody you can use. Make me somebody that you can use. Just a vessel of honor that yes. you can use. Yes. Not, not any attention, not anything other than a vessel you can use. Yes. And a true warrior, a true warrior is about doing what his commander says. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Even when it's uncomfortable, and we've done that a bunch. Yes. Man, there have been things my flesh was screaming that God would have us do. And there was times that, and, and I learned to... There were things that God had us do that my flesh was screaming that we had to do it. <laughs> there so were either times, way, our flesh was screaming. <laughs> there were times that I did move in the flesh and would make big mistakes, and nothing ever worked out. No. I, I learned, you know, okay, it's not worth moving in the flesh, even though you may feel a temporary relief of, of the stress of the smoke getting ready to come out of your ears. But it, if you flow with the Holy Spirit, you'll always be okay. And, and I, I am telling you, I can feel the power of the season of declaration. Because I want to just say it. I want to point at buildings. I want, and I may do it. If God tells me to, I will. But I'm going to be prayerful that it's not me. Yeah. If it's, if it's you, your words fall to the ground. But I, I also think we're at a time that not only did our words fall from the ground, I think they're going to end up, there's going to be repercussions. Well, it's, it's in my situation, if you've ever been connected to the occult at all, in any way, a victim or whatever, you got to be very careful what you say. Mm-hmm. Because, because it, I think a lot of the people that they targeted to attach to the occult are 
prophets and prophetesses because you will have power in your words. Be a prophetic and, and I have seen people, I've seen my mom say things, and it wasn't a godly thing, and it would happen. Yeah. And so you have to be very careful. That's why I'm so guarded. Yeah. You know, in, in, the, in the prophetic, it's because God's moving and God's anointing to direct the words. In the occult, it's focus and it's emotion that they, they, they focus their entire being and all their emotion of hatred or whatever, and they focus it on those words mm -hmm. to try to bring it to pass. It's, the, it's like a laser, yep. but there can also be prophetic laser. Yep, exactly. And that's, God's, that's what we want. We, we want, want God's specific word, will, done in a situation. And, and it is my opinion, and correct me, Father God, if I'm wrong, it is my opinion that God does not want one of these places standing that has done this. Not, not one. one. And I am telling you, they have been so um, defiled. It would be like something in the Old Testament where he says, you got to dig it down. Just don't let anything be standing. That's right. Dig up the foundation. It's putrefied. Absolutely. I'm There's telling a... you, there is something about when you defile little children. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm well, didn't Jesus say better that a millstone be tied around your yeah, neck? You thrown, thrown into, into the, sea. the sea. And uh, guys, these things in the Word are true, and it's 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 God expressing how He feels, and that yes, He is He is He is able. He has long suffering. Let me tell you something: when that cup of iniquity is full, hell trembles because well, they it, know. it knows it. it, it just, there's a line that you don't cross. And there's a line being crossed right now that God's getting ready to act. Well, there's there's one thing in particular that I don't think I've ever felt more anger from heaven over is when you put God's name on the defilement. Yes. Exactly. Man, that's that's where that's where the judgment's gonna start. You know, it's gonna start at these churches. It got so bad in Israel, Mary, that they actually instead of calling Yahweh, you know, even Adonai, they were calling him Baal. Mm. And the prophets start screaming out, "Don't ever call me that." That's and and it's 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 getting that way today. When they when they stand and say ab abortion is a godly thing, and that it's a religious thing, it is if you're an occultist. Mm -hmm. But if you're yeah, a, it's if, part of their. Religion. But if you're walking with Baal and Molech, yeah. But if you're walking with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is not. Well, the fact that 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 was turned around by the Supreme Court, is huge. Yes. I think it was a, an earmark of the, t the turning of the tide. Now, and my concern has been, what in the world is going to happen as the tide turns? <laughs> but we're going to have victory. God's going to have his people stand in places, and his power is going to be shown. It's just, man, we may be on one shaken shaking ground <laughs> And see, I, I think if we pray, one of the things that I that I and I write about this in, in my second book, that the 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 occult have seen how there are patterns of history and how there are cycles of history, and even the whole concept of Adam Weishaupt when you go down to where you get to aftermath, is to take control of the judgment and then bring it about to something you want instead of what God wants. Yeah, but still, God's the great judge. Yeah. So, and so I think that's one of the things that we need to pray. Is you see, they're already planning in America for only about 92 million people to be left. They're already planning all these things, but they're wanting their people. We, we have the World Economic Forum saying, we don't even need to have you as sirs. We, we need all of you to die because we can replace you with robots. Well, you know what? We're not the ones that need to leave. You know, the Bible says that he takes out the tares before he gathers the wheat. Well, there needs to be some time for some tear taking. A well, lot of people always, that they, think that they're above the judgment. They've always had a defilement of things this time of year that they call the harvest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to do that harvest home celebration, all that. Um, they don't want the harvest that's coming to them. No. And there will be a true harvest of souls brought to God. Yes. This, this is a time that if anybody's in the New Age, if anybody's into witchcraft or anything like that, they better get on their knees. Yes. And you, this is prophetic. I am telling you, I feel the unction of the Holy Spirit. They better get on their knees Yes. because God's getting ready to clean house. And it doesn't matter whether it's in a church or a business or wherever it is, 
Just hold on. Absolutely. This is. I think this is going to be 10 days of all like we've never seen before. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm so ready. I'm so tired of seeing this evil just escalate and escalate. And, uh, boy, especially, uh, I saw a thing where a little child went up and touched one of the drag queens in an inappropriate place, and I thought, I recognize this. I know what this is. Mm-hmm. And it's it's time that it stopped. And I will not quit declaring. I will not quit praying until I see it stopped. Absolutely. Because this is this is insane, and it's up to us to stand and pray. And... Um, and if somebody wants to say this sounds like hate, yes, it is. The Bible says we are to hate evil yep. and to love good. And and we can love people Yes, and pray for, for them to be saved out of this. But this has got to stop. Yes, it has turned putrid. And so let us focus, as we're in the, the days of awe, let us believe that there is going to be great judgment on the wickedness come the Day of Atonement. Absolutely. As we're fasting and praying before God, let us believe that God is going to move mightily for his kingdom's sake. And while the enemy is being judged, Father, let God's people be set free. Father, let every yes. chain, yes. every chain, every bondage, anything, whether I don't care if it's mind control, I don't care yes. if it's whatever kind of bondage the enemy that, that the enemy has on your people to where he thinks God can never use them. God can never use his remnant because I have so bound them up. I have so wounded them. I have so controlled them that they'll never be used. Father, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would move in power. And Father, that when your fire falls, that we will be like Shadrach, Meshach, and a bend ago that everything that binds us up will be burnt off but we'll yes. be in that fire the fire of the holy spirit with the fourth man in the fire and we'll come out walking out of that fire mm-hmm. not even smelling a smoke without any bondage without anything holding us back father god and it'll even cause those that are left among the wicked to bow the knee and declare that almighty god is god and god alone and father we declare right now you are the great i am yes there's nothing you can't do there's no life that you can't restore outside of the reprobate minds that have turned themselves totally over to wickedness. There's not one Christian that you can't restore. There's not one unsaved person that you can't save and turn their life around. And Father, I believe out of the ones that are trapped, that are still salvageable, that are not reprobate minds, that there will be a mighty army that is so sickened by what was done to them that they will be fierce in pulling people out. Yes, Father. And for every day that this continues, Father, bring a thousand of them out. Yes. We, we, we believe that you are going to restore beyond anything we've ever seen. Father, we're going to see miracles of limbs being restored. We're going to see miracles of, of backs being straightened. Father, things that, that look impossible We have faith that you're getting ready to do the impossible, and we will give you the glory, we'll give you the honor, and we will declare over all this earth that you are the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and there's none like you anywhere. And you are the creator, and all creation is answerable to you, Yes, whether it is humans or angels, both, uh, both good and fallen. Yeah. They're all answerable to you. Every demon is answerable to you, that, uh, that the very... The very f- atoms of the universe are answerable to you. Mm-hmm. And Father, we declare that you are the righteous judge, that you are El Elyon, and there's no other judge but you and you alone. Father, judge, set your people free, enable us to move forward in your power, we ask. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 
That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.